Hi everyone, welcome back. Now in this lecture, we're going to talk about the concept of duration. Now what exactly do we mean by duration? Duration refers to the average period over which your invested money is going to be returned. All right, You have invested some money in the bond. What is the average period over which you will be actually receiving the money back? For example, you have purchased a bond at $970. All right, If you have purchased a bond at $970, say maturity 5 years, you will receive coupon at the end of year 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and you will receive maturity value at the end of 5th year. Therefore, if you look at it, your entire amount is actually not being returned in a single shot, but it is actually spread over. All right. So your return, your, the amount that, that you have invested, which is $970, that is going to be returned over a period of five years. And But it's not exactly going to be five. Although the major chunk of it is going to be returned at the end of fifth year, there is a portion that you're recovering in between as well, in, in, in year one, year two, year three, and year four. Therefore, your average period over which you're going to receive the money back is going to be called as duration, which will be slightly lesser than five years. It's going to be slightly lesser than five years because you're receiving small, small portions of cash flow before the fifth year, although the major chunk is in the fifth year. Therefore, your average will still tend towards your duration will still be on the higher side. It will be, say, 4.5 years. Be reason being, you're receiving only small, small amounts today and the major chunk is actually being received at the end of fifth year. And therefore, your average period will still be high. It will be closer to five, but slightly lesser than five. All right. It will tend towards five. What I mean by tending towards five is your duration will not be one year or two years. Your duration will still be above four and a half, but less than five years. All right. So that is referred to as duration. In capital budgeting also, you had something called as a payback period. All right, you had something called as payback period. Dura what payback period is for capital budgeting is actually du duration is the same for bonds. All right, duration is exactly the same for bonds. Now think of a zero coupon bond. If you think of a zero coupon bond, you invest your money today at, and let's say you buy the bond today at $800. For a zero coupon bond, you actually have zero coupon, which means you do not have any intermittent cash flows. You do not have any cash flows at year one, year two, year three, year four. Directly, you receive the face value on maturity. You buy a bond today at $800. You receive the face value at maturity of $1,000. So what is the average period over which you will actually receive your investment back? The answer is you're going to receive your investment back only at the end of fifth year. You're going to receive your investment back only at the end of fifth year. There are no cash flows in between at all. and Therefore, you're going to receive the investment at the end of fifth year. And that is why for a zero coupon bond, the duration is always equal to its maturity. For a zero coupon bond, if the maturity is 10 years, duration is 10 years. If the maturity is 3 years, duration is 3 years. Whereas for a, for a coupon paying bond, duration will be slightly lower than maturity. Duration will be slightly lower than maturity. Now, given that we were talking about zero coupon bonds, in case of a zero coupon bond, if you think of it, there is no reinvestment risk. Reinvestment risk arises only when you have intermittent cash flows. All right. Remember reinvestment risk. We discussed it in the previous lecture as the risk of the fact that I might not be able to find a security to reinvestment, reinvest my $120 at 13.27. Over here, there is no $120 cash flow itself that is coming. For a zero coupon bond, there is no reinvestment risk at all. That was just an incidental thing that I communicated. For a zero coupon bond, which has no coupon, duration would actually be equal to the maturity of the bond because there is no cash flow in between at all. Now, when we normally utter the word duration, it is also referred to as, as Macaulay's duration. What we are actually, when we utter the word duration, what we are actually calculating is Macaulay's duration. All right. So we are actually going to see how to calculate duration or Macaulay's duration. Why am I adding the word Macaulay? Because there is another duration called as modified duration that we will calculate. All right. There is another duration called modified duration also that we will be learning for CA final. All right. So this is duration or just, uh, I mean, just duration or Macaulay's duration. Modified duration is something else. All right. We will see how to calculate this, but one better use 
the first meaning of Macaulay's duration, like I mentioned, is that we are actually able to calculate what is the average period over which my amount invested is being returned. All right, that is the meaning of duration. A better use of duration is this is an input to calculate modified duration. Macaulay's duration is an input to calculate volatility or also referred to as modified duration. I'm repeating myself. We have understood the meaning of Macaulay's duration. Another better use of Macaulay's duration is it is uh, it is an input. It is used as an input to calculate modified duration. Modified duration is also referred to as volatility. All right. Macaulay's duration is an input for calculating modified duration. So first, let us see how we calculate Macaulay's duration. Then we will also see how to calculate volatility or modified duration. And what is the meaning of volatility or modified duration is something that we will also learn. All right. Now let's take an example. Face value $1,000, coupon 11%, required return is 10% and maturity is 3 years. All right. Coupon 11%, required return 10%, face value $1,000 and maturity is 3 years. The first method of calculating Macaulay's duration. There are two methods. Both of them, actually, I shouldn't be calling them methods. They're just mathematical, all right? A plus B into C can also be written in some other way, right? It can also be written as A into C plus B into C, all right? Just, just because it is being calculated in a different way does not mean that there are two methods. It's just a mathematically, you're basically doing it a little differently, all right? So first method is, you have to first calculate the intrinsic value of the bond. All right. You have to first calculate intrinsic value of the bond, which means how do you calculate intrinsic bond, bond value? First column, you will have years. Years one to three, you will have annuity cash flow of $110. Years one to three, you will have annuity cash flow of $110. Year three, you will have face value of $1,000. One to three annuity, one, uh, uh, $110. Year three, face value $1,000 your discount rate or the required rate of return is 10%. Your discount rate or required rate of return is 10%, which will be your, which will be the rate at which you're calculating present value. So the third column will be present value factor, years cash flow, present value factor, and finally the discounted cash flows. All right. So you have got years, cash flow, present value factor, and discounted cash flow. I have intentionally not written one to three over here. Whenever you are calculating duration, you always have to break it down into one year one, year two, and year three. I will tell you why we have to do that. But for now, just think that we have to do it. Year one, you have got one, two, three, 110, 110. And in the last year, you have got 1110. All right. And then I've calculated present value factor at 10 percentage, which is 0 0.9091, 0 0.8264, and 0 0.7513. And then you have the discounted cash flows 110 multiplied by 0 0.9091 plus 110 multiplied by this plus triple one zero multiplied by this. And the sum total is nothing but the intrinsic value. Remember what you're calculating over here is nothing but the intrinsic value. Although you want to calculate duration. One of the incidental steps is that you have to calculate intrinsic value. All right. So this is actually your intrinsic value of the bond. All right. Now in the next place, we are doing time multiplied by discounted cash flow, which means year multiplied by discounted cash flow. One multiplied by 100, which is equal to 100 itself. Two multiplied by 90.9, .9, which is equal to 181.81. Three multiplied by 833, which is equal to 2501. All right, so there, therefore, what we have done is we have done time weighted all right we have multiplied it with the number with the year in which we are receiving the cash flow therefore effectively we have time weighted this discounted cash flow all right if you look at the ICI definition it will refer to as time weighted what is the meaning of time weighted where you're using this as weights all right you're giving weight one to the first year cash flow, weight two to the second year cash flow, and weight three to the third year cash flow. And that is the reason I did not write annuity met of one to three. If I would have written one to three right over here, then what I, what would I have multiplied it with by? All right, only if I divide it as one, two, and three, I'm able to multiply it by one 
two and three respectively right had i done annuity of one to three hundred and ten i would not have been able to multiply it over here and that is the reason i said whenever you're calculating duration you you should always have it in the form of one two three all right always have the years as one two three four five do not all do, never ever do one to five in one in in the same row all right so we have done time weighted take the sum total of this this sum total does not have any meaning all right this sum total does not have any meaning 2783 if you ask me to explain what is the meaning of 2783 i will say i do not know there is no meaning at all all right duration is nothing but this time weighted 2783 divided by the intrinsic value of the bond duration is equal to T into discounted cash flow divided by the discounted cash flow. 2783 divided by 1024. 2783 divided by 1024, which is equal to 2.7162 years or 2.72 years. Why have I written the word years? Because like I mentioned, duration is the average time period. All right. It's the average time period. This is a bond which has three years of maturity, but I am receiving my investment back. All right. If I buy the bond today at 1024.84, which is the intrinsic value, I am going to receive my investment back in 2.72 years itself. On an average, I'm going to receive it back in 2.72 years, which means I'm going to receive some cash flows on year one, year two, and at the end of year three. On an average, the payback period or the amount in which or the amount number of uh, years in which I'm receiving or recovering my investment is 2.72 years. This is called as Macaulay's duration or just normal duration. All right. Duration is the average period over which my investment is actually being returned. Some cash flows are received in year one, year two, and a major chunk is received in year three. Therefore, the, the duration is slightly towards year three. If you notice, the duration is not 0.5 years or one or one and a half years. Your duration is actually above 2.5 but it's closer to 3 but less than 3 but it's less than 3 why is it less than 3 because you have some cash flows that you're receiving in year 1 and year 2 for a zero coupon bond which does not have any cash flows in year 1 and year 2 your uh, Macaulay's duration will always be equal to the maturity or, uh, or the number of years left to maturity in case of zero coupon bond modified duration is nothing but Macaulay's duration divided by 1 plus YTM. Modified duration is equal to Macaulay's duration divided by 1 plus YTM. Modified duration is equal to Macaulay's divided by 1 plus YTM. YTM is nothing but the required rate of return, right? YTM was nothing but the discount rate we used over here. So 1 plus YTM is equal to modified duration is equal to Macaulay's duration divided by 1 plus YTM or 1.10, which is equal to 2.4692. Before I tell you the method two of Macaulay's duration, first let's try and understand what is modified duration. What is the meaning of modified duration? Modified duration basically means if my discount rate over here, if the interest rate, all right, if this YTM changes by one percentage, I'm now using all of this interchangeably discount rate or the required rate of return or YTM or the interest rate, all right, interest rates in the market. Why am I saying interest rates in the market? Because your required rate of return is a function of the interest rate, right? Your required rate of return was a function of the risk-free rate of re return, all right? So if any of this changes by one percentage, all right, if the required rate of return or if the YTM or if the general interest rates in the market, they change by one percentage, then your bonds price, your bonds price will change by 2.4692 percentage in the opposite direction. Remember, discount rate and price have got inverse relationship. If the interest rate goes up by one percentage, if the general market rate interest rates goes up, go up by one percentage, or if your required rate of return goes up by one percentage, or if the YTM goes up by one percentage, then the bonds price will fall by 2.4692 percentage the bonds price will fall by 2.4692 percentage 
although I would not do it in this lecture, what I will do in the next lecture is I will actually increase the discount rate from 10 to 11 percentage. I will increase the discount rate from 10 to 11 percentage and I will actually show you that the bond's intrinsic value, the bond's intrinsic value is falling from 1024.84. It will fall by 2.4692, not dollars. It's going to fall by 2.4692 percentage all right what is 2.4692 percentage 1024.84 multiplied by 2.4692 percentage it's going to fall approximately by 25.3 dollars all right it's going to fall by 25.3 dollars so this modified duration repeating myself the meaning of modified duration is or firstly the formula mccullough's duration divided by 1 plus ytm the meaning of it is if the general market interest rates increase or decrease also all right it can work it will work both for increase in discount rate and decrease in discount rate all right if the general market interest rate changes by one percentage your bonds intrinsic value will in, will also change by Two, will change by 2.4692 percentage in the opposite direction. All right, I'm making a general statement again. If the in general market interest rates change by one percentage or if the YTM changes by one percentage, your bond's intrinsic value will change by 2.4692 percentage in the opposite direction. Why am I saying opposite? Because if the interest rates increase, bond price will fall. If the interest rate falls, then the bond price will actually increase from 1024 the bond price will actually increase from 1024.84 therefore modified duration is to, uh, is is basically helping you calculate what is the fluctuation all right what is the fluctuation in the bond price with in relation to your discount rate all right in relation to the interest rates in the market how is your bond price fluctuating with respect to changes in interest rate all right Although I wouldn't really get into the details because it is absolutely not at all relevant for you to understand if you go back to your 11th class or maybe some mathematics in your school levels, you used to have something called as y equal to mx plus c. You used to have a line equation called y is equal to mx plus c. If you think of it, y over here is nothing but the intrinsic value x is the discount rate that we are using x is the discount rate that we are using y is mx plus c although y is the uh, intrinsic value x is nothing but the uh, discount rate m over there was the slope all right when you used to learn y equal to mx plus c m was the slope the meaning of slope was when x changes by one unit how much does y actually change by when x changes by one unit how much does y actually change by that was the meaning of slope if you carefully look over here that is what we just discussed modified duration if ytm changes by one percentage if your required return changes by one percentage if x changes by one percentage if ytm changes by one how much is the intrinsic value going to change by how much is the intrinsic value going to change by it's going to change by 2.4692 percentage therefore your m or your slope is nothing but 2.4692 percentage all right your m or slope is equal to 2.4692 percentage y is nothing but the intrinsic value X is nothing but the discount rate. M is the slope. Slope is nothing but modified duration, which means when X changes by one unit, how much does Y change by? All right. So this is nothing but the slope of the equation. Your modified duration is nothing but the slope of the equation of this bond price or of this bond. All right. So that's how you calculate Macaulay's duration and modified duration. All right, now before we end this lecture, let's actually look at method two. I hate to call this method two because this is just mathematically different. You're not really using a different formula. You're just mathematically doing something slightly different, but which is actually an extension of method one itself. In method one, repeating myself, what we did was we calculated the intrinsic value of the bond and then we did some time waiting. We did time waiting of T into discounted cash flow. We calculated the sum of it and then we did T into discounted cash flow divided by the intrinsic value of the bond. 
in method two, what we are doing is after calculating discounted cash flow, what we do is this is the intrinsic value. We calculate the intrinsic value of 1024. We then calculate proportion of each year, proportion of each year to its price. 100 divided by 1024 is equal to 0 0.0. 90.9 divided by 1024 is equal to 0 0.08. 833.94 divided by 1024 is equal to 0.8137. All right, 0.8137. So if you take the total of all this, sorry, if you take the total of all this, that obviously has to be equal to 1. All right, the proportion of all this has to be equal to 1 because you did 100 divided by 1024, 90.9 divided by 1024, 833 divided by 1024. 1024 is nothing but the sum total of all these three, right? So the proportion has to be equal to 1. All right, to calculate duration, what you will then do is year multiplied by proportion. I didn't have an extra space over here, therefore I didn't write it, but you can un add another column called year multiplied by proportion. Year multiplied by proportion, which is one into 0 .9, 0 0.0976 plus two into 0 0.0887 plus three into 0.8137, which is going to be equal to, again, the same thing, 2.7161, 2.7162, all right? What you did is in the above, method one also you divided it by the price over here all right but you divided it by the price after multiplying with the time weights over here you're dividing it by the price first and then you're multiplying it with time weights either ways it's actually going to give you the same answer it's not going to give you anything different either ways you're going to obviously have the same answer all right. So that's it for this lecture, guys. So in this lecture, we actually understood what Macaulay's duration is and what modified duration is. In the next chapter, in the next lecture, sorry, we'll actually continue our discussion on modified duration, which will slowly tend us towards the convexity adjustment. All right. That's it for now, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.